In this video, we're going to be solving for missing exponents. Um, so, real quick, right off the bat, oops, that's a 5. It's the cube root of negative 125. Well, in order to solve that, you think in your head, what to the third power equals negative 125? Or, what's the opposite of something to the third power that equals positive 125? Either way, in this case, hopefully you know that it's 5 to the third power. And in order to get negative 125, it's negative 5 to the third power. So we've done problems like that where we've done, um, in order to solve for this variable, we've done the root, we've taken the cube root of both sides, or the square root of both sides, or the fourth root to undo an exponent, um, whatever's required there. So today, we're going to be focused on basically this type of problem. Negative 5 to what power? is negative 125. So this is, this is what our problems will look like today. We're going to be solving for missing exponents. I'm going to show you a little trick for how to do that. Here we go. Hmm. Let's start with that original example, just so we know what we're doing. So the first step you always want to do is um, break things down, factor, or break numbers down to common bases. So least common factors or lowest common factors. Um, so on the left side we're already, we're down as low as we can go. We can't factor or go any lower than base 5. However on the right side if we get a common base, meaning if we get the same base as 5 here, then we say, well, negative 5 to what power gives us negative 125? Hopefully you know it's 3. And then the second step is to ignore those bases and solve the equations of the exponents or solve exponent equations. And what do I mean by that is basically ignore the bases and here's your equation x equals 3. And that's really what we did. We solved for x there. We solved for that missing exponent. So enough with that example. Let's use these two steps here and do a bunch more examples here. This is where it gets tricky. In order to solve for a missing exponent, got to get both sides to have the same bases. How do we make 8 and 1 fourth the same base? Break it all the way down. What do 8 and 4 have in common? What's their lowest or least common factor? We could think 2. That's as low as we could go for both those numbers. So we're going to try and get both of them to have a base of 2 and 2 to what power gives us 8? Well, it's 3. And since we already got that x up there, we're going to end up multiplying those two things together. Let's go over to the other side. How do we turn 1 fourth into a base of 2? Well, first, let's get rid of this fraction using negative exponents. So that would be the same as 4 to the negative 1. Now let's make 4 base 2. So 2 to what power? 2 squared gives us 4. We still have that negative 1. Back over to the left side we had the 3 times x, that's 3x. Now that we have the same bases on both sides, just ignore them. And solve the equation of the exponents. So we got 3x equals negative 2. Divide both sides by 3 to get x by itself. 
and you find that that missing exponent is negative two-thirds. Well, let's check it. Eight to the negative two-thirds, that means the cube root of eight to the negative two power. Well, the cube root of eight is two, and two to the negative two takes us over to one-fourth. So our missing exponent was negative two-thirds. Let's do another example. We could have more things going on up in the exponents. We have things like this. So again, try and get down to the common bases. 5 can't go any lower, and 25 could have a base of 5. So we'll leave the left side alone for now. 5 to what power gives us 25? Well, that would be 5 squared. We still have that t minus 1 up there. So now ignore our bases and just focus on the exponent ex equations. 4 minus t. Distribute. Don't forget to distribute when you're multiplying a number outside parentheses. So 2 times t is 2t, and 2 times negative 1 is negative 2. Keep solving for t. I would prefer to add t to both sides, and we could even add 2 to both sides as well. So this goes away, and we're left with 6. This goes away over here, and we're left with it's an invisible one there, 3t. Divide by 3 to get t by itself, and t ends up being 2. So if we go up here and we check it, 5 to the 4 minus 2, substitute 2 for t. Is that equal to 25 to the 2 minus 1? Well, 4 minus 2 is 2, so 5 squared. And 2 minus 1 is 1, so 25 to the first. 5 squared is 25, and 25 to the first is 25, so it checks out. Our missing exponent was 2. Alright, let's do another example. See how many we can do here. Let's do another one with a fraction. Ideally, you want to get rid of your fractions using negative exponents. So, 1 27th is the same as 27 to the negative 1 power. And hopefully you can recognize that 3 would be the lowest common factor here. So that's the base we need to get. 3 to what power gives us 27? 3 times 3 is 9, times 3 is 27, so 3 to the third. Still have that negative 1 up there. Ignore our bases. And we're pretty much done. 3 times negative 1 is negative 3. So our missing exponent was negative 3. Well, that's true because... 3 to the negative 3 is the same as 1 over 3 to the 3rd, which is 1 over 27. Let's use one with a radical. So again, we're trying to use exponents, so get rid of that radical form and use an exponent instead. Anything that's a square root can be rewritten as a exponent of one half. And now we know we need to get five as our base. So five to the what power is 125? It's five to the third. We still have that one half up there. Multiply those together up top and ignore our bases. We get x is 3 over 2. And that checks out because 5 to the 3 halves is the same as 5 to the 3rd. And we want to take the second root or a square root. So we get the square root of 125. So that checks. They're nice because checking is pretty quick and easy. Let's try 
Try and do a challenging one here. Forty-nine. Say x minus two. On the other side, we'll say seven times the square root of seven. So our common base we want is going to be seven. We know that. So forty-nine is seven to the what power? Seven squared. Make sure you rewrite your x minus two up there as well. Let's take care of this radical first. So the square root of 7 written as an exponent would be 7 to the 1 half. Now I'm multiplying two numbers, two of the same base together. What do I do with exponents? Think about your exponent properties. This has an invisible 1 for an exponent. When we're multiplying the same base together, we add their exponents. So this simplifies the 7 to the 1 plus one-half. Over on the left side when we distribute, don't forget to distribute, two times x is two x, two times a negative two is a negative four. How are we going to add this fraction over here on the right? Remember that we need common denominators. So this is really one over one plus one-half and we need to make this a two. So multiply top and bottom by two. So really we have 2 over 2 plus 1 half, and that gives us 3 halves. Add the numerators, keep the denominator the same. So we have 7 to the 3 halves on the right side now. And on the left side we still have 2x minus 4. Ignore our bases and try and solve this equation. 2x minus 4 equals 3 halves. See if I can move this over here, get some more room. I'll rewrite it over here on the left. 2x minus 4 equals 3 halves. That's what we're doing. So I need to add 4 to both sides. In order to do that, I gotta again get a common denominator. If I put this over 2, that means I'm multiplying top and bottom by 2. So we get 2x equals 8 halves, that's the same as 4. And now we can add it to 3 halves. So we get 2x equals 11 halves. We get x by itself, we divide by 2. Well, dividing by 2 is the same as multiplying by 1 half. We get x is 11 times 1, and 2 times 2 on the bottom, we get 11 fourths. So, nice little challenging problem to end up that little video. Solving for mix, missing exponents. Two steps, pretty much. Just get your bases the same, and then ignore those bases and solve the equation of the exponents. It's good luck finding missing exponents.